Hey guys, it's time for Tech News Day. 3D printing has given the general public the ability to design and manufacture things in ways that were previously impossible or prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. Now anyone can open up a free 3D program like SketchUp, design any old shape, and take that file down to the local library or makerspace and get it printed out for dirt cheap. It's done wonders for uh, amateur inventors, toy designers, cosplayers, and so on, and it seems to have been a real blessing until you remember that, uh, oh yeah, you can also use a 3D printer to make a gun. Mm -hmm. And not just any gun, a gun that's mostly plastic and therefore hard to pick up in a metal detector. So I guess we just can't have anything nice, can we? Life finds a way, or mm -hmm. death finds a way, I guess. <laughs> to be fair, 3D printing a gun, instead of machining metal the way actual gun manufacturers do it, results in a pretty shitty gun. Yes, it does. <laughs> the 3D printed gun that started this whole craze and controversy is the Liberator, whose design was first released by the nonprofit Defense Distributed back in 2013. Now, the Liberator holds only one bullet at a time. It's huge, it's inaccurate, and because it's entirely plastic aside from the firing pin, which is just a nail, it only lasts a few shots before becoming completely unusable. So not exactly useful for a mass shooting, but still capable of firing off a single round that could kill someone if you hit them, you can get close enough. People have been killed by people shooting their guns in the air, so, you know, it's possible. Now, this is all while being completely unregistered and, again, very hard to detect with a metal detector. Yeah, so the Liberator, not a great gun. It was more about making a point than being an actual, like, viable gun. Mm -hmm. Its creator, Cody Wilson, started Defense Distributed and released the files for the Liberator specifically because he doesn't believe the right to own a gun should be infringed in any way possible, including just basic registration. Mm -hmm. So before releasing plans for the Liberator, Defense Distributed actually released plans for 3D printing uh, AK-47 and AR-15 receivers, which are capable of lasting for a few hundred rounds, though that didn't pick up as much controversy, probably because most non-gun people didn't pick up on the fact that a rifle's receiver is the part of the gun that's legally the gun. Mm -hmm. Anyway, within two days of the Liberator files being hosted online, the U.S. Department of Justice ordered that Defense Distributed take all their plans down, so they did. But of course, nothing ever gets erased from the internet, and the files remain very easy to find on file-sharing websites. The controversy around 3D printed guns stems not just from the usual pro-gun, anti-gun divide, but also the fact that 3D printed guns present a philosophical conundrum that the law doesn't really know how to deal with. Unregistered guns and guns that can't be detected by a metal detector are illegal across the entire United States. But a .stl file containing plans for a 3D printed gun isn't a gun. It's a file. But it's also a file you likely wouldn't download unless you planned on printing it, so that part would be illegal. It's sort of like how the infamous Anarchist Cookbook contained instructions on how to do all sorts of illegal things, but it wasn't itself illegal, although the author not really pleased at uh, his creation at yeah. this point in his life. Whoops. The documentary is uh, quite engrossing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, even that comparison, it's not quite accurate because buying the Anarchist Cookbook didn't allow its owner to print a gun at the push of a button. Strange times we're living in. It could make napalm, though, pretty easy. And amongst many other things. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Anyway, the reason we're talking about this right now is that the original judgment from 2013, where the U.S. Department of Justice ordered Defense Distributed to take those files offline, was reversed by the Trump administration a few weeks ago in a settlement that also awarded Defense Distributed $40,000. You won. So uh, they would now be allowed to post their files to their website again, starting on August 1st, which is this week, hence why this is once again a hot topic. Mm -hmm. The controversy has attracted so much press that even President Trump, whose own government gave this the go-ahead, wrote on Twitter, I'm looking into 3D plastic guns being sold to the public. Already spoke to the NRA, doesn't seem to make much sense. But that doesn't also make sense because he's talking about 3D printed guns being sold to the public and not just downloading the files and printing one. And he's also like, hey, there's this thing going on. Let me consult with my lobbyists. Yeah. Instead of saying... Yeah, directly consulting <laughs> with the NRA, who has been, by the way, very silent ever since this Russian operative thing has come out. Yeah. So... Hold on, let me check with my lobbyists to see if uh, this is... We need to make the decision that's going to keep the donos coming in. Yeah, he's so, speaking uh, about 3D printed guns in the NRA like you would speak to your friend who wants you to come out and play, but you have to ask your mom first. <laughs> mom, are you sure I can't stay out past 7 tonight? <sighs> Anyways, meanwhile, uh, three different gun control groups have unsuccessfully attempted to uh, in court to block the designs from being allowed to be posted online, and 21 states have now filed a joint lawsuit also seeking to reverse the DOJ's decision. But however you feel about this topic, at the end of the day, none of this fucking matters. 
as soon as those files came into existence, there was no way that any law was going to erase them from the internet. Allowing Defense Distributed to post them to their website will make finding the plan slightly easier, but that's about it. Now, anyone seriously wanting to 3D print a gun or rifle receiver hasn't ever had anything stopping them from doing exactly that. It's, it's, it's out there. there. You Pandora's can't, box. You can't do anything really to stop it. Yeah. Now you might argue that this line of reasoning that we just used is also applicable to the issue of guns in general and that any attempt to regulate guns is pointless because the bad guys will always find them if they want them. But there's a big difference between physical weapons and digital files. Uh, if you hypothetically were to ban all guns, getting a gun would be significantly more difficult and at the very least would involve leaving the house probably. Uh, that's a lot more work than finding a banned digital file that's been duplicated and reposted all over the internet. Banning guns would be hard. Banning a 3D printer file is basically impossible without a bunch of effort and manpower put into tracking all the IP addresses of everyone who downloads it and sending the cops to all of them, uh, assuming they didn't just use a VPN. Yeah, the people that are- It would be very hard. The pe <laughs> There's a weird cross section of people that actually would download a 3D printed gun uh, or use 3D printers in general and have basic tech knowledge needed to execute on that. And also people that use Tor browsers, VPNs, and everything else to keep themselves safe online. There's a slice there that's actually quite big, I would yeah. assume. So, yeah. This whole thing doesn't make any sense. It's just a weird philosophical com uh, conversation about the morality behind this, I guess. Because it exists. Yeah. It's already out there. There's no way you can stop it. Yeah, it's uh, and you can't put a task force on it because the religious freedom task force, they they're putting all their money towards that. Yeah, guys, we need to make sure you're free to be religious, and by religious I mean Christian. Yeah, Christian. Anyway, in fact, not only will banning this at this point do absolutely nothing, but coming out loudly and publicly against 3D printed guns mainly serves to just draw more attention to them and expose their existence to people with zero knowledge of 3D printing who might not have ever known such a thing was possible. Yeah. Streisand effect. Exactly. Now that's not to say that this is something that people should just let go though and be cool with. I mean, the idea of getting murdered by a gun that someone made in their garage at the push of a button, pretty fucking troubling. Also, it probably hurt a whole lot because it's very inaccurate and probably isn't very good. Yeah, he was aiming for my face. Got it me right in the dick. Would have been a clean death, but he shot my dick off. Yeah, now I'm just sitting here bleeding. I wish he'd used a real gun. Uh, but I mean, look, aside from that, there's also like other plenty of common sense, like loopholes and things that need to be fixed and regulated in guns that would have a much higher likelihood of actually accomplishing anything than stopping a file from being spread on the internet. Yeah. It's like, sure, I want to stop an intruder in my home, but thanks to California, when an intruder comes into my home to steal something, I got to get out of bed go into the closet, pull some stuff out of the way, get the lockbox down, open it up. Throw into the, the breathalyzer. Tr take the trigger lock off, put my fingerprint <laughs> on it. All five fingerprints. Hold on, criminal, hold on, I hold on, and then you shoot him, which is why I just booby trap my front door yeah. uh, at all times. I have the Home Alone house. Yeah, yeah, I have a trap door that people fall into a pit with spikes in it. Anyways, are trap doors illegal? Did they ban those? Uh, well, all that stuff, the whole like home alone, your next uh, sort of home defense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's pretty much illegal. I spread the floor <laughs> with micro machines every night before I go to sleep. I just have parts of my floor that have nails sticking out. Yeah. I know to avoid them, but. There's a giant iron that's constantly heated that all I have to do is pull a string from bed, hit yeah. them in the face. And, and before I go to bed, I tie a bunch of paint cans to some rope, put it right next to the front door. Yeah. So if the only way to stop it, bam. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a person with an eight-year-old's mentality filled with a house full of booby traps. Yeah. It's the only way. It's true. Okay, so like, okay. <laughs> Back to the story. Back to reality. Uh, like, uh, for example, one way to, I don't know, one more productive way to do gun regulation mm -hmm. that actually, you know, is a pretty serious thing that I didn't even fucking know about until this week, uh, remember how a rifle's receiver is the part that's legally the gun and therefore the only part that's actually registered and how you can buy all the other parts pretty easily without registering them, but the receiver, that's the gun, that's the part that's all the trouble. Well, you can very easily go online and purchase what's called an unfinished receiver. Why are you telling them this, Elliot? <laughs> 
You don't have to register anything because it's non-functioning, unless of course you do a very basic amount of machining yourself with a fucking drill at home to make it functioning, but you wouldn't do that of course because that would be illegal. You just like buying completely useless gun parts and not doing anything with them. And like driving at the at speed them. limit yeah. at all times. Yeah, oh man, look at that gun receiver. It's uh, Isn't it amazing how it doesn't work, but would with just a little bit of manipulation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just want to do that. You're not trying to get around the fact that you're a fucking psychopath who's been banned from owning a gun, like the 2013 Santa Monica shooter who murdered five people using an AR-15 equipped with an unfinished receiver that he bought online. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That seems like something maybe might be a little easier to regulate than a digital file moving yeah. around online. That makes it a terrible gun. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's move away from that hot button topic to something equally controversial. Whether or not InfoWars should be allowed to spread fake news on Facebook and YouTube. Well, since we last talk about, talked about this, which was just last week, Facebook's wide spectrum of problems got even bigger when their stock price dropped by 20% in one day, losing $123 billion in value. By the way, that's enough money to almost buy two 20th Century Foxes. Yeah. So this had basically nothing to do with InfoWars though, and was mainly a reaction to the fact that Facebook's user base, it's not really growing anymore. At most, it could have around seven and a half billion people on the yeah. platform. Hold and, on. <laughs> wait, wait a second. We need to start selling these people uh, pro-pregnancy ads. We need to make more users. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Facebook, they're working really hard to get that one child family rule repealed in China. Also yeah. to get access to China. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, they're not growing anymore, uh, though all the constant bad press over the last two years certainly played a part in that uh, big drop-off. It was sort off. of a perfect storm. Yeah, anyways, following that wake-up call, Facebook suspended Alex Jones' Facebook page for 30 days and removed a handful of InfoWars videos from the site. Wow, yeah, that slap on the wrist. Got him. To the biggest fake news outlet in the world. Uh, it didn't even happen, though, until YouTube first issued a strike to Alex Jones' YouTube channel. Facebook basically just treated that as their cue to also do something because they're fucking spineless. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, we're not going to get into that whole controversial topic again this week, but we do want to take this opportunity to make fun of Ted Cruz because fuck that guy. Yeah. Ted Cruz wrote this on Twitter following the news. I am no fan of Jones. Among other things, he has a habit of repeatedly slandering my dad by falsely and absurdly accusing him of killing JFK. But who the hell made Facebook the arbiter of political speech? Free speech includes views you disagree with. So, he's fine then with him constantly having his dad called. He's a free speech absolutist, but like it just he comes across like he just has a history of being, for lack of a better term, a complete fucking cuck. Yeah. It's like like because Donald Trump also said the thing about his dad murdering and his K ugly wife and like talked called his wife ugly and Ted, yeah. like Donald, you stop it. And then like you know, the week of the fucking election, he's on the phone just like, hi, this is Ted Cruz calling on behalf of. My master, Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, like he probably, when Ted Cruz was in high school, probably like the, the kid who was running for class president just like pulled his pants down in front of the cheerleaders and everyone's like, look at his dick. Well, and Ted's like, said, well, I, you know, he may have pulled my pants down and exposed my micro penis to all the girls, but you know, he has as much of a right to be here as I do. I've always said from the beginning of Ted Cruz even coming into national fame that he looks like a guy who smells bad and poops in the pool. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows, if you've watched the old, you can't watch them anymore, but if you've watched the old <laughs> ETC videos, I say multiple times, every time he's brought up, that he looks like the kid that pooped in the pool Absolutely. every summer. Absolutely. But I will say, and there was a lot of conversation about this last week, free speech, yes. That's, say whatever you want on Facebook, and it is up to the people on Facebook. We made the analogy last week of if someone says it's raining outside, maybe stick your head out the window and see if that's actually true. Sure. But there's a difference between that and just blatant propaganda, which yeah. also, again, probably shouldn't exist on the platform. Also, when the companies that are putting it out are profiting off of what they're yeah. doing on it. Yeah, and when you're a site like Facebook who's been like, we're taking down fake news, guys. We screwed up with the whole fake news thing, but you know, we're fixing it. We're doing a great job. Okay, what about the, the single most popular fake news website who routinely lies and spreads yeah. like dangerous uh, ideas that have uh, in the past already inspired people to commit violent acts. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, some people on the left, some people on, like, come but on. It also doesn't do come any favors on, that, like, their, their verification process for having your page verified, for the most part, is somewhat easy to do. 
So when you are a person on Facebook who's, let's say, not the smartest person, this is just an example. I'm not saying that people that believe this stuff aren't intelligent at some point, but say you're not the smartest person and you see a news article that is completely fake and completely yeah. done for a specific purpose and you see whatever news site it is, it's, it's Freedom Press or whatever, I'm just yeah. making that up, but like has the verified thing on it. Yeah. As a layman, the I'm going, stamp of oh, okay, that is legitimate. Yeah. But yes, you have to be smart enough to at least go outside and check that it's not raining. Yes. And that's, that's the whole argument yes. I think I have. Anyway. Yeah. Enough well, yeah. about that. Let's just, uh, we're, we got a few more quick tech stories this week. Let's start with one that we wish Phil was around to cover. He's very busy, apparently. Yeah, he's, uh, he's on a shoot right now. So mm -hmm. we'll do our best to try to emulate the kind of glee and genuine joy that Phil would experience while letting you know that the state of New York has told internet service provider Charter Communications, AKA Spectrum, to get the fuck out and don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Yeah. Charter Spectrum has broken a bunch of promises that it made to the state of New York, and New York is actually punishing them for it, which is always a pleasant surprise. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. It's my Southern Mama impersonation. Oh, you should, you should go up to Just for Laughs and try that one out on stage. Yeah. Anyways, back in 2016, Charter Communications purchased Time Warner Cable, and because this meant there would be significantly less competition in the ISP industry, New York State would only uh, allow the deal to go through within their borders if they promised to expand their broadband offerings in both quality and quantity. This was in addition to the conditions that the FCC set at the federal level to approve the deal. Uh, well, the New York Public Service Commission has waited two years to see any consumer benefit of letting this massive ISP get even more massive, and has officially decided that Charter hasn't kept up their end of the deal, which I'm sure is shocking to all of you. I know. So in a press release last Friday, the New York Public Service Commission wrote, Charter, doing business as Spectrum, has, through word and deed, made clear that it has no intention of providing the public benefits upon which the Commission's earlier approval was conditioned. These recurring failures led the Commission to the broader conclusion that the company was not interested in being a good corporate citizen, and that the Commission could no longer, in good faith and conscience, allow it to operate in New York. So fuck yeah, New York! <laughs> Hell yeah! And now Charter, the biggest ISP in the entire state, has just 60 days to submit a plan for a smooth transition to other providers that would ensure absolutely no interruption in service and pay a $3 million fine. Get which, fucked. Which I'm sure won't get passed down to their customers in other states. <laughs> Woo, lad. Uh, it's still well within the realm of possibility that they'll find a way to weasel out of being brought to justice, but for now, we'll count this as a win because we don't get many wins these days, especially when it comes to ISPs screwing over customers. Just making the executives and top level people at, at Charter or Spectrum uncomfortable, that's yeah. sort of a win. Just a few flecks of poop in their underwear yeah. makes me happy. It's so weird that competition like spurs innovation. It's like here in LA when all the companies were like, fuck it, fine, we'll do, uh, we'll do the fiber, you get the gigs and all that stuff, and then all of a sudden, Spectrum here is like, we, don't worry. Yeah. A couple of months, we got the fiber rolling out. Yeah. It's almost like monopolies uh, don't really uh, encourage well, they have innovation. Yeah, it's almost like they have no benefit to innovating because <laughs> yeah. they're the only ones in charge. What are you going to do? Move? Mm -hmm. Anyway, next up, let's do a quick robot news roundup. Uh, First up, <laughs> uh, the company OpenAI managed to get a robot hand to teach itself the sort of dexterity that's natural for able-bodied humans, but would be a nightmare to manually code into a machine. Uh, basically, they place a cube with sides featuring different letters and colors into the hand, and then they tell the AI to turn the cube to a specific orientation. The AI then quickly runs a ton of different simulations on how it would actually do that, and then it chooses the best one and does it. Uh, it may not seem all that impressive uh, at first glance, but this is kind of a big deal, and it opens the door to robots being able to tackle much more complex and delicate tasks than they are currently capable of. But yeah, we get it. All you're thinking about, you're looking at this thing and wondering, when you can buy one and have it jack you off because you're a fucking pervert. Not me. Get that robot hand away from me. I'm waiting for these, I'm waiting for the robot to walk like this and then while they're coming towards you are actually 3D printing a gun inside their stomach <laughs> and then they go, halt! <laughs> and then they just throw it away because they just print another one. Yeah. Boom! They fire it, it, it misfires. God damn it. You know what I a great know. example of a robot using a, a great gun to accidentally shoot people's dicks off? Accidentally on purpose. Remember when Fatal Farm did that Robocop? I just watched that the other day. A friend and I was having... It is brutal. I, 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 I'm, I don't like it. You can find it. It's yeah, on Vimeo it's, or something. Uh, you definitely can't have it on YouTube. No. If, or if it is, you gotta sign in. I think it might be on YouTube. I don't know. You gotta sign in it's for that. It's pretty nasty. It's gross. Yeah. 
But anyways, also in robots, one uh, that's a lot less useful, but still impressive, is this ping pong ball bouncing robot created by Tobias Kuhn, which manages to keep a ping pong ball bouncing on a small board continuously without falling off, and somehow does this using just four tiny microphones, which let the robot use the sound of the bounces to estimate where on the board the ball is. Pointless, but still pretty neat. Yeah. Similarly, uh, a robot out of UC Berkeley named Salto doesn't seem to have any real purpose, but it's a pretty cool robot. It, it's kind of weirdly cute. It's got a cute name, mm -hmm. Salto. Salto is basically just a tiny robot that can bounce around like a rabbit or a frog or a kangaroo, all on one tiny leg without falling. Look at him go. This one's going to be, they're going to turn this into a fucking toy. I know it. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, here's one robot that's actually 100% cool as fuck and hopefully leads to more of this kind of thing. This is a robot that moves a little LED around to paint with light. Mm. Now, light painting is, of course, when you take a long exposure photograph while moving a light source to create lines and streaks or even words and drawings. But this automated process basically allows for doing that in stop motion. It creates moving three-dimensional objects made entirely out of light that look like something that could only possibly be computer generated. And... Uh, to be fair, these animations do start as CGI, but that's just used as instructions for where the robot puts the light. Mm. The light painting machine, according to his creator Josh Sheldon, takes hours to even get a few seconds of animation. And the whole thing looks like it was a, a fuck ton of work to invent, but uh, hopefully this leads to him getting tons of work, because this kind of thing would look great in like music videos, commercials, maybe even movies and TV shows. It's, I've just never seen anything quite like it. That's cool. Well, also in robots, residents of Phoenix, Arizona and Frisco, Texas are going to be some of the first people in the general public to get to ride in self-driving cars as passengers, thanks to pilot programs in each of those towns. The Texas program is run by the startup Drive.ai, and it's officially live as of this week, offering rides around a specific hub within the city devoted to retail and dining. In a wise move, their vehicles are big, bright orange vans, which announce quite loudly to everyone around that this is a self-driving vehicle, both for, I'm assuming, safety and marketing. Yeah. Anyways, of course, these, these big orange vans still feature a human in the front seat for now, who can take over whenever something goes wrong unless they're watching Hulu or Netflix, which is what happened in Phoenix last time, right, with Uber? Yeah. That was on, like, a highway, though. This one, it's smart. It's, it's probably never going to be going more than, like, 25, 30 miles an hour. Yeah. It's got a very, like, contained route that they've tested the shit out of it on. Good and bad marketing for Hulu. It's like, Hulu, so good you won't even keep your eyes on the road. Pretty much bad marketing. Yeah, it's probably bad, it's probably <laughs> bad marketing. Uh, uh, there's also going to be a safety driver for Waymo's pilot program in Phoenix, uh, where they're doing a fleet of self-driving vans with the safety driver up front, making sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. They're uh, also now driving customers to and from Walmart. Oh. Uh, as long as you've ordered groceries ahead of time with the Walmart app so you can go pick them up outside. This is uh, great for fat people. Yeah. 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 You don't even need to get the buggy. So. I mean, it's Phoenix. The, like, walking anywhere is out That's of the true. question. That's true. And if you can't drive for some reason, like, you're pretty much fucked. Yeah. So. This would be great for, uh, uh, like, the the handicap vans that transfer patients to and from hospitals. Yes. Uh, take, uh, like, older people around and stuff like that. That would be, that's, it's great for that. Old people are like. Oh, get old people off the road. They should be the first thing They that should they be the on. first ones in the backseat of a self-driving car, but they're, honestly, pr the last ones who are going to trust this sort of thing. And also, <laughs> like. Yeah, it would be very hard to get them acclimated to the idea of doing this. Yeah. yeah. But in, in a general sense, yes. I don't think so. <laughs> I'll take my chances behind the wheel. No, just put like the thing like in uh, Fifth Element where it's like a guy who's head, hey, welcome to the car. <laughs> like, you just got to give them something to talk to with shapes. Yeah, that's colors. true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this Waymo, they're all over Phoenix. They got a similar deal with Avis and budget rental car shops to pick up and drop off customers when they need a rental car, which makes sense. Yeah. And they've got plans to team up with a local hotel to shuttle guests around. That's cool. So yeah, Phoenix is going to be full of self-driving cars. If you don't like it, get out. Uh, you probably should anyway. It's real hot there. This place should not Their be. Their airport is perfect for this. Because it's like, oh, yeah. it's gigantic and it's all like highways and, and it, it's very well done with the city. You could get somewhere very, very easily, especially yeah. if you're just going to a rental car place. It's a smart idea. The whole place is like a grid, too. Mm -hmm. Lots of space there. Yeah. Uh, what Waymo and Drive.ai are doing in both of these cities, it does give us an interesting glimpse at our self-driving future. And from the looks of it, it seems like actually owning an autonomous car is going to be a lot less common 
then hailing one that will pick you up, yeah. take you where you need to go, and then you know go do the same thing for someone else. Yeah, exactly. Owning a car in 30 years is going to be like a luxury because you're an enthusiast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, otherwise, it's just especially in a city, like it's just gonna be like oh, I need a car, and there'll be like. Well, Waymo has a lot more to prove in Phoenix because they've already got one death on their hands. So. No, that was Uber. I well, I know, but, but the yeah, city Phoenix. of Phoenix and self-driving cars. Yeah, so. it is kind of weird that they're like Uber, get out. Wait, Wait, come on, come on. <laughs> uh, anyways, in the meantime, most of us are still stuck with hailing a human-operated ride from Uber or Lyft. But there's some good news out of Lyft, at least for us. They're considering adding a Zen mode that can you can activate when hailing a ride that lets the driver know beforehand that you're not in the mood for small talk. Although, especially with me, I'd be like, I'm just not going to touch it because then they're going to think I'm fucking weird. It's, it's strange. It's pretty passive-aggressive. It is a little passive-aggressive. <laughs> Although when I look on it and I see known for being talkative or like Ugh. great conversation, I'm like, ah, fuck. Uh, anyways, currently it's a complete gamble whether the driver you get is gonna be dead silent or wanna talk your ear off. And there's no real polite way to tell the driver to just shut the fuck up when you're exhausted or need to answer emails or just not fucking interested in talking. Uh, I say it's something that they're considering, but allow us to throw in our two cents here. Fucking do it, Lyft, please. Please, or just Make a company-wide policy to not initiate conversation. Yeah, don't initiate. Like, Be friendly when you get in. Hey, how's it going? This, is this your location? Great. How are you doing today? And then done. Yeah. I mean, there's times when I'm feeling talkative. Like if I'm in a, a town that I don't know very well, yeah. get a lift, pick me up from the, the airport. I'll, I'll talk to the guy, see if he has any recommendations or anything. If I initiate the conversation, the customer. The customer's always right. Let me speak to your manager. Well, if, no, I, no, if I initiate, as yeah, someone sure. who takes ride sharing service every day, because I still haven't bought a car after mine burned down, I the the thing that I do now most of the time is I have headphones and I'll just put my headphones in even if I'm not listening to something. Yeah, it's just like being like on the subway or on yeah. the on the bus. It's a uh, it's a tried and true trick uh, that women use to avoid being sexually harassed. Yeah, so put the headphones <laughs> in. Just always have headphones in. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> it's a good strategy and it works all the time. Yeah. And then you're already in, so just fucking put on put on our videos. Yeah. Watch watch our videos. Or watch the podcast them all. version. Or listen to them on, on your favorite podcasting app. Yeah, if you search Internet Today or Weekly Weird News on your favorite podcast app, guess what? All these episodes are audio now, but please watch them here. Yeah, we don't get any money from the podcast, but it's just a it's nice... It's a service for you. It's a... Uh, it's just a nice thing we did for you. It's I a just gift. noticed you wore your uh, Ted Cruz shirt today because of Ted Cruz. I did. I did. And I wore my Stacia shirt because I like early 2000s Screamo. Whatever. We'll see you guys next time. Watch these other videos over here. We have a brand new episode uh, of News Dump about Movie Pass. Then we have a follow up that includes more information on Movie Pass, but also uh, talks about a, a YouTuber who got booed off stage at a comedy festival. Yeah. Also, new news out of uh, Movie Pass. Who knows if it's going to even be there next week? They upped the price to $15 and then said you absolutely cannot see most like new movies in theaters. Yep. Basically useless. They nerfed it. Yeah, so uh, well, more, to, more on that to come, I'm sure. Just pull the plug. We'll see you guys next time.